Miniature Market has thousands of board games at discounted prices. Click the direct link below to see all these Gen Con releases or any other games. Hello my friends, it's the Game Boy Geek here. Now Gen Con is right around the corner and earlier this week I put out my top 10 most anticipated games for Gen Con. Those are ones that I haven't played before and they just seem cool after doing a lot of research thanks to Board Game Geek for putting that preview list together. This video, in my opinion, holds more weight. This is my top 10 games releasing at Gen Con that I've already played. For me, these are, if I was a viewer, this is the one I'd want to watch. The other one always gets way more views. I can never figure out why, because I would want to know what is tried and true that's going to be releasing at Gen Con that people have had the privilege, like myself, of playing early before they came out. Like, these are ones that I've already played that I like. I feel like this list is even better than the anticipated list. But, so here we go. Here is my top 10 games that it's kind of releasing at Gen Con that I've already played. These are sure things to go check out. Number 10. Now before we get started with number 10, a couple honorable mentions here and things that wouldn't normally make the list, like expansions, for example. Renature Valley from, from Capsicum Games. This is an expansion for Renature, which was that Michael Kiesling Wolf game Kramer game. It was my family game of the, uh, in my top 10 family games of the year that year. Uh, and it's a fantastic expansion. I've already reviewed that. So if you're look, if you like Renature, Check that out, it's amazing. An older card game that had come out, it was used to be called Abluxen in Europe and then called Linko, L-A-N-K-O. Also Wolfgang Kramer and Michael Kiesling, this is a card shedding game. It's coming back in print. Uh, Amigo Games has picked it up and it will be there. This is a great card shedding game. Great, it feels like a classic, but it's got some modern things going on as well. Also two, uh, sort of uh, a, a, a reprint actually, Acquire. This is being reprinted and re-implemented by Renegade Game Studios, and this will be at Gen Con as well. A classic look, but they went back to the nice, you know, board with the nice uh, tiles that actually slide on the board, and they stay there nice, like the old 1964 version or 68 version that I have, but it's new, but it has a classic look. So if you like Acquire, the new version's coming out. So let's get to my actual number 10. This one is called What the Cup. Yes, what the cup. This is from The Op. I had a chance to play this at Origins. This is sort of a party-ish game. By the way, I'm trying to create a list of this that has all different types of games. Party games, two-player games, Euro games, strategy games, all this, all different types of games. This is sort of a party-ish game where it's kind of like Liar's Dice with uh, some twists there because you're trying to, you know, uh, have the most chips when everyone go, when one player goes out of chips. So you're going to roll this die and you're going to look at it secretly and then when it's your turn, you flip over a card, you can either do what the card says, like peek at someone else's or swap a cup with somebody else, or you can change it because at the end of the round, either the highest or the lowest number is going to win depending on this one token. So on your turn, you can either do what the card says that you flipped or you can flip that token over from low to high or from high to low. And again, at the end of the round, whoever has the highest or lowest die under their cup, depending on that token, wins. But you're doing things like peeking. You're doing things like looking underneath and maybe changing. Maybe you're uh, asking somebody about theirs. Maybe you're doing different things. So you're dice are moving around. You're trying to keep track of what's going on. You're trying to have the highest or the lowest at any given time. But there's, a, there's some bluffing involved, right? And what you don't do is just as important what you do do, and you're trying to read into what numbers, values people might have under their cup based upon what things they choose to do or what they choose not to do. It's a really fun little sort of party game. If you like Liars Dice, this has similar feelings, but also feels very different itself. What the cup from the up. Number nine. Number nine is from Panasaurus Games. This is called District Noir. This was originally released uh, previously at a small printing, and now Panasaurus is bringing it. They redid all the art, they redid the cards. This is a two-player game that's all about getting into the other people's heads. It's about timing. You're trying to have the most points, but you're trying to be getting cards like uh, uh, if you have the most sixes, you'll get six points. If you have the most sevens, you'll have seven points. But how this works is really interesting because each round, you're either going to be placing cards into a display in the middle, or you're gonna be taking a certain amount of cards from the end. And so there's this thing where you know what you have in your hand, you don't know what your opponent has in their hand, and you're sort of like pressing your luck. It's almost like a game of chicken as to when to take what's there or when to place out based upon what you have. And you play multiple rounds, and at the end, whoever has the most wins. It's very interesting. It has a little bit of a Lost Cities feel as like temporary storage in the middle. Uh, I've fully reviewed this game, so you can go check that review out. But District Noir is a fantastic getting the other players' heads 
thinking about what they might be doing or what they might have in their hands, and then some tactics there. Uh, really cool two-player game. It takes like 15, 20 minutes to play. It's really good, District Noir. Number eight. Number eight. The next one is a game I just recently reviewed. You can check it out on my channel called Wandering Towers. This is a, uh, fr from uh, uh, Michael Kiesling and Wolfgang Kramer. This is from Capstone Games. This is a family level game uh, where you're trying to get all of your wizards into the Raven's Keep, but you're also trying to fill up all your potions and or use them. And how this works is it's a card driven game where you're playing these cards and moving either your wizards around or moving towers. And the interesting twist is as you move towers, it's kind of like Camel Up, where you move towers and everything above that tower also moves and you're actually imprisoning other players' wizards, meaning putting the towers right on them. By doing that, you're actually filling your potions, which is one of the things you need to do to win. So part of the times you're moving towers, trying to capture other, uh, imprison other players. Other players are trying to move those towers and unimprison themselves, but they're also trying to get their, their, all their wizards in the Raven's Keep. It's kind of almost like a rondellish game because you're going in a, in a clockwise circle, but it's very hand-driven. Uh, pretty easy. There's some special powers you can use. It is a family weight game, but one that I played with non-gamers and gamers and both like it. Wandering Towers, just getting released now, and it's a good family game from Capstone Games. Number seven. Number seven is, again, another one I just recently reviewed. Uh, this is from Starling Games, Tabletop Tycoon. Uh, this is Everdale Farshore. This is the new standalone game in the Everdale universe where they kind of took 90% of what Everdale did before, and but to that, they added and subtracted and massaged and basically made a better, more streamlined game than Everdale. This kind of has replaced Everdell for me. I was always eh, okay on Everdell. I liked it, but I wasn't in love with it. This is a better game. So if you liked Everdell, uh, I think you should really check out Far, uh, Everdell Far Shore because, again, I, I think it's a better game. They've streamlined some things. They've made things just work a little bit smoother. Uh, and I imagine they're going to be coming out for the expansions for this as well, so you don't have to worry about having all those things. They are different. I'm not sure if you need both of them, but if you are an Everdell fan, I think this is, you got to check it out. If you have never bought Everdell, I think this is the one to get. Uh, and you can go check out my review to learn more about this. Number six. Number six is a party game from WizKid Games. This is called Blob Party. Again, I just reviewed this one. Check it out on my channel. This essentially is like just one, which is like one of the best party games ever, one the Spiel des Jahres, in reverse. Because what's gonna happen is there's a category and then one player selects a word from a bunch of word cards. So you have a category and a word. Uh, and everybody is trying to come up with something to write on their boards, on their dry erase boards, secretly. And you're trying to be the same as as many other people as possible. Unlike just one where you're trying to be different from everyone. Here you're trying to be the same. You're trying to go with what the flow, what you think the majority of people will say. And everyone will flip it up. And everyone that is the same will actually become one blob together. And so the next round, all the people that have become one blob, for all those people, they only come up with one answer from all of them together. So you're sort of like in the corner talking about it or showing each other your answers, coming up with one. So as it goes on, there's less and less blobs, less and less answers, so it actually gets harder to match. But you're all trying to be one blob at the end of the seventh round. It is an absolute blast. This is a special party game. It's just like just one to the fact where you go, this is so simple, how has this not come up before? How come I didn't think of this? Plus the blob is like this little clay with these little eyeballs. It's adorable. Fantastic party game. Blob Party. Number five. Number five is a game that actually came out uh, a little further back than most of these. Most of these I try to keep like ones that are just releasing at Gen Con. Tribes of the Wind uh, came out uh, right around just before Origins actually, but uh, not everyone goes to Origins. So this is like the first large, large, large convention that's gonna be in North America. There was a small Essen release last year. This is a game that's kind of like Hanabi, if you ever played that, where there's some information that you can glean from other players' cards, from the backs of their cards. You can see what kind of suits of cards they have. And you're gonna be playing a card for an action, but that card will be, it will be like, hey, I can't do this now. Or it will be like, I can do it. Or it could be like, I can do this really well, depending on what the other players next to me, my two neighbors have for cards. So there's a lot of timing things of going, hmm, I have more blues than left, but not but right. Maybe I'll wait, because that person, if they just use a blue, I'll have more than both, I can do this really powerful action. 
So you're trying to find the right time to use these cards, but all in all, it's sort of a Euro game. You're, you're building up your own tableau. You're moving wind riders around your board. You're trying to get rid of pollution. You're trying to go for these end game goals. There's like a Euro game in it, but also very card driven. It's one of the most unique games I've played in the past years. One I highly recommend you check out because this is definitely a fresh and unique twist. Plus it's got Vincent Dutre art. It is gorgeous. Uh, so check out Tribes of the Wind. I've also reviewed it. You can check that out as well. Number four. Number four is a game that I have done a review and the official rule school for. This is called Search for the Lost Species. This is from Renegade Game Studios. This is the sequel to Search for Planet X, which is, has been known for the longest time, was my favorite deduction game of all time. This is a sequel to that. It is not just Planet X put into looking at species and exploration. They actually have changed some of the mechanisms in the game. Now there's an abstract uh, component where you actually are moving around an island as opposed to just going in a circle like in the, in the space. Now you actually can move around and go different spots uh, in sort of an abstract way. There's some new abilities. You can go to towns and gain town folk. And from them, they'll give you some special abilities or maybe some in-game goals, some new mechanisms there. Plus the theme's completely different. And there's some other changes. Check out my review where I talked about the differences and similarities to uh, Search for Planet X. I know that they've redone some of the complaints I had about the app because I only had like a non-released version when I did those reviews. Uh, so check it out. If you like deduction games and or you liked Search for Planet X, this is the sequel. It's finally going to be here at Gen Con. So check that out. Number three. Number three is a card game I recently reviewed. It is a trick-taking game from Panasaurus Games called Aurum. A-U-R-U-M. It's about different metal types like silver and gold and things like that. And in this game, so it's either a three or four player game. It's a three player individual trick taking game, or it is a four player team versus team, two versus two trick taking game. And yes, that is a limited player count, but I will tell you, this is, this might be one of the best three player trick taking games I've ever played. It's amazing. It's like trick taking in reverse. You cannot follow suit, kind of like Potato Man, if you've ever played that. But Trump is gold cards and they're in front of you. Anyone that has a, a Trump card, Every, you can always see what's there. And so you're always looking, you can, you can change, uh, you, you can't follow suit, but you can always trump other things. But when you bid at the beginning of the round, you can spend one of these great gold cards to change your bid before any cards are played in, in any trick, which is cool. But also what's going on is if you, the person who plays the smallest card gets a new gold card most of the time. So you're gaining trumps even though you're losing, there's enough twists here. I'm telling you, it is like trick taking in reverse and there's a decent amount of changes from normal trick taking, but none of them are hard to understand. And it just works so well. Aurum, fantastic. If you like trick taking games, you've got to play this one. If you've got this three to four player account, it's really good. That's Aurum from Panasaurus Games. Number two. This next one, I just picked up at Origins and also just released a review about it. This is called Splito, S-P-L-I-T-O. This is from 25th Century Games, who, by the way, over the last two, three years, have been knocking it out of the park with great games. This is no different. This is a small little card game. If you've ever played Between Two Cities or Between Two Castles of Mad King Ludwig, it's a similar game to that where you have two neighbors and you are gonna be scoring and working semi-cooperatively with the neighbor to your left and your neighbor to your right. This is a card drafting game, very simple. The cards are either just gonna have numbers and colors like suits, like normal cards, or they're gonna have a goal on it. Like say, uh, have the most reds at the end of the game or only have two twos or have exactly three threes in front of you. And so what's happening is on your turn, you're drafting a card, you're selecting one of those to put either in between you or your left uh, player or between you and your right player, the, the, your neighbor. And at the end of the game, you're gonna look at how you score. On each of those, you're gonna multiply those two together with the two people you're working with, and that's your score. It's super simple, but there is so much depth to this game as to what you're working on. There's limited communication. It takes those ideas of those other games that, I, that was the best parts of those games and streamlined it so that you could play this with mass market crowds. But gamers love this game too. I am so impressed with this game. I played it with Origins with you know Rodney Smith and Rich Summer and the Secret Cabal guys. And everybody, like we stopped after playing it and ran into the hall. They all bought their copies and we ran out as fast as we could so we didn't get all, you know, because we had other games to play. Uh, it's a fantastic game. It's definitely going to be on my, my short list for either card game of the year or family game of the year this year for sure. Splittle from 25th Century Games. Number one. 
Now, if you're watching this, you definitely play games, and hey, why not make some money while gaming? Now, the World Series of Board Gaming 2023 is in Las Vegas from September 24th through 28th, and they're giving away over $40,000 and Super Bowl-style rings to the winners. Now, there's 16 different games available to play, like Ticket to Ride, Wingspan, Terraforming Mars, and many more. Now, you can click the link below to learn more details of how it works, and to receive $40 off your entry using the promo code GAMEBOYGEEK. My number one uh, game that I've already played is Sagrada Artisans. Sagrada is one of my favorite games. I think it was in my top 20 of all time. It's a very puzzly game with dice, dice drafting, where you're trying to figure out the right place to put these dice because you can't put the same color or number next to each other. But there's three shared goals that everyone's shooting for every time, but you also have a private goal. It's a, and a fantastic game. Well, this is the new version of Sagrada. It's a standalone game that is the legacy version. And you're not just playing on a board. You actually get a book. You know those old stencil books that you would color in with colored pencils and they, they just look almost like paint by number but with pencils? That's what this is. Each game you have a sheet of paper in this nice book, but it's, it doesn't just stay as like normal square windows. They go into all these different irregular shapes, making it more challenging. But you're going to be unlocking and making money. You're going to be able to spend that money on new tools and new things. And as you can imagine, different things happen over the course of the game. And you're going to be getting things that are going to add new rules and new goals and new things. All that stuff in legacy games. I'm not typically big on legacy games, but this, I did the preview for this one. And it's just really cool. If you like Sagrada... You've got to check out Sagrada Artisans, and that is from Floodgate Games. All right, well, I hope this helped you put some things on your radar for next week at Gen Con. If you're going there, things to look at that you might want to go run and buy. And if you're not going to Gen Con, hey, they're going to either, either some of these are already available now. If you go to the BGG uh, list, uh, you can see all the different things that are there. But if, if some of these are already out, you can check Miniature Market uh, website. They have some of these for sale or for pre-order already as well if you're not at Gen Con. There's a Miniature Market link down below that will take you right to Miniature Market where you can see where some of these things are. And I hope this has just helped you learn about some new games that I think these are sort of the freshest and newest and best ones that of this year coming right before Gen Con. This has been a Game Boy Geek, breaking down barriers, growing relationships with board games, and helping you find the next one you love. Game Toppers not only transforms your existing table into a high-quality gaming solution, but they now offer full leg kits and dining cover solutions for the full table application. Paired with over 20 styles of thematic game mats in 11 different sizes from notable board game artists like Vincent Dutre, collapsible cup holders, and real cool accessories, experience what thousands of other gamers enjoy by upgrading every game you play with a Game Topper system. Save hundreds of dollars on Game Topper package deals that are in stock now for immediate shipping at GameToppersLLC.com or click the link below.